Um, so for me, Min is like a part of a new generation of Chinese designers that that celebrates uh, Chinese culture uh, with modern and innovative uh, um, uh, products and objects that are heavily influenced by traditional Chinese arts and crafts, um, which doesn't sound that surprising, but was like a no-go when you look back in Chinese history and the cultural revolution that happened in the in the 70s. Um, but what makes Min for me also very special is that like he is this bridge person, you know, he he has this versatile range of perspective that he gathered over the years uh, studying in Cologne, Germany, uh, in at the Domus Academy in Milano um, and, and at the Design Academy in Eindhoven where I had the pleasure to run into him and uh, uh, we kind of became friends and stayed in contact somewhat loosely. And uh, I think that makes him very special because he has all these other influences and he has seen the differences between like the Eastern and Western culture. Um, uh, in like 2010, I think you decided to go back to China and uh, you started your uh, office, uh, Jenmin, uh, in Hanzhou, China, 2012, mm -hmm. which I have to say is a gorgeous, beautiful city. It is a city that has like an old, like historic uh, uh, part of the city. Um, and uh, uh, Min was so friendly to like um, invite me to uh, a, a beautiful restaurant in the, in the tea mountains of Hanzhou. And then also introduced me to my first Chinese tea house, which was, uh, was uh, very exciting. So, uh, um, <coughs> yes, so um, that's a bit, to say about him, he is an award, his, his, his work is award winning. It's exhibited across like the world. Uh, he, he gained international recognition. Uh, one of the products that um, you may have seen is the Hanzo stool, which I think is just a beautiful, beautiful object. Uh, it, it almost reminds me as a German to the Ulmer Hocker, which is like a, 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 the German Bauhaus version of a very simple chair. Um, and uh, well, now he is like, he's there to talk about the, the differences and the update transition between Chinese innovation and design practices and, and uh, more Western parts that he also has seen and uh, super happy to have him and uh, um, yeah, have, have fun. Uh, and I'm looking forward to a great presentation. Wow. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for, for the interview. The introduction actually I uh, also prepared a little page but I think you have done a very nice job <coughs> and hello everyone uh, it's already morning in China but uh, good evening to you all um, I've always heard of Seattle you know, when, when I was young you know, every Chinese in my generation knows about the, the movie like Sleepless Seattle and but still haven't been there. <laughs> I would love to, um, but I don't know when I can finally visit. But we keep it in my schedule. And today, I think um, I'm going to, um, like I have said to, to the guys, and uh, it's it's rather a discussion than a, a presentation. It's it's about uh, my adventure in back to my my own country. Although it's on my own country, but I. I do have a lot of experience uh, abroad. Then I, I came back with a fresh eye to, to discuss and, and also to do to discover um, the, the, the culture and, and the reality in this country again. So uh, let's start. Um, I think yeah, here is it's just a short uh, introduction of myself. I, I have spent almost 10 years in, in Europe, started from Germany and then to Netherlands and then to, to Italy. And I worked a little bit in 2010, I decided to come back and I, I throw myself into the south in Guangdong province because I think that's the frontier of the Chinese industry that I really want to know about um, the, the reality of the industry, what is going on. So, um, I started with this image because that's that's I think it's seven or eight years ago. Uh, I was driving actually; it was dangerous, but I, I really need to take this photo. 
because it, it really express a, a kind of state that I see in China. It's a mixture of, of the tradition and the modernity. And it becomes a big topic uh, still going on in, in China. <clears throat> the topic is tradition and modernity. Um, let me introduce you guys a little bit about the, the tradition part. So China is always eager to, to update itself, you know, to modernize the whole country. And when talking about tradition, and I think family is the, the cell of the society. So we are actually very much bonded in, in the family, but in, in the old society about, I think before of the, the liberation of PR China, uh, we used to stay in such a context. It's, it's a big family with like four or even five generations together. And to hold, to host such a, a big family, this is what you need in you know, you know, architecture. You know, you, you need a home, which is like typical in, in the North China, playing when you have this uh, a small yard in the middle and, and, and houses to, to live in. And then even after liberation, you know, from walking, most of us uh, are using bicycles. We, we used to be a, a country on the bicycles, but now everything's changed. After the open policy of Deng Xiaoping and the family structure started to become more or less like this, especially for, for my generation. I am certainly the ones that you know, on the bottom. And then we have also parents of both sides to, to, to do this and, and the single child is still on top of us. And this is very typical. And the living environment becomes like this. And we don't have big houses and, and yard and gardens, no. We are completely living in a, in, in a kind of social context like, uh, you know, after the First World War, what uh, the, the Frank Kitchen came up, you know. So I found this, and we probably have lost our, our social context in old society, but the tradition still goes on. Also, when the country on the bike becomes the country in the car, and this is certainly a big problem, you know and traffic jam is everywhere in China now. And so I think we are discussing a lot about the, the, the crisis of losing traditional culture. And because I find that Chinese have a, a, an amazing interest in, in novelty. Everything which is new almost equals good in China. This is completely the, the opposite of Europe. Because in Europe, when something comes, something new comes, it, people usually were afraid of that and then put it down for, for quite some time. And then it slowly will, will melt into the society. But China, no. Something new comes, people think it's good, boom, it's there. So that's why if you guys have ever experienced to visit China, this is what in, in the center of Beijing, it's, it's no longer like forbidden city or anything, you know, it's, it's just like, I don't, know, I don't know, Tokyo or anywhere in the world, it, it, it can be. I think in, 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 in such a way, we are losing our identity. Then I think why this is, um, why, why things have become so. And I come back to the to the language, you know. Um, and and the left side is the the Chinese character of new. Then we 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 are building up uh, concepts very different than, than the Western culture. You have creation, in, innovation. That's all different concept. But in Chinese, we always just put new as as one of the the member of the word, and then you just change something before and i find this is this is could be a, an, an interesting thing you know when when you 
constructed language in your head and then you, you already think differently, you already accept the, the concept differently. And I find in our culture, um, if, in the, in the, in, if we, we talk for a very relatively long historical perspective, then that can become evolution. But the thing is, I, I would like to, because evolution is, is kind of too big for me and then it's really uh, takes a long time to, to prove it. But I would rather stay as a very small step that's called an update. And then I think then the Chinese are really, really liking to, to, to update themselves every year, you know, or for example, change a new mobile phone, change a uh, renovation of the house and everything. You just want to keep it renewing it. This is quite interesting. Um, but I find the, the tradition of innovation is very different in this country. Because in, in the Western world, I think people are very good at doing creation from zero to one. Uh, by saying that, meaning it's, it's, in, it's actually, actually invention, you know. Sometimes if something comes up, it's completely new, very um, um, breathtaking. But in, in the Eastern culture, I think we are used to do innovation of one to n. By saying that, meaning we are repeating a lot of things. When you repeat, repeat, and in, in a certain way that if you improve a little bit of the details, then things will, will change. So I think this is the, the rhythm of how we do uh, innovation in the Eastern culture. And then for me, I would like to call it update. It's, it's you know, a very small step. And then we update a little bit. Maybe in the long run, it could become e evolution. It's like I have some evidence. Like this is all the products by uh, Xiaomi. And then I think the Xiaomi, this company uh, started from copying the, the West North or the Japanese products. But now if you, you enter the Xiaomi store, you think the products are really innovative. Um, you hardly find any, any traces of copying. And it, you know, it, it, in, my, in my eyes, it's, it's, they, have, they have complete their, their, their pro progress of updating. And also saying, these are what we say, the, the, the new four great invention of China. But none of it is even invented in China. It just we we have learned from the Western world or the Japanese, and then we update it with with the the great quantity in this country, and then it, it becomes something new. So I think um, people probably haven't really said it loud and clear in in, in the country, but. I think this is the evidence that I found um, about innovation in China. Then I think back of the, the you know the topic of tradition and modernity. Um, I think uh, I would like to uh, the way that I am I'm keeping tradition if it's valuable, and I think I, I would like to to let it sustain. And this is very Chinese concept of uh, sustainability, because to sustain is just to live. And then you have to find some new evidence for it to, to survive in, in the new social context and let it sustain. So from here that I have tried in, already in, in, my, in my time in Eindhoven when I, when I studied, <clears throat> so I started to find some evidence of um, uh, the relation of modernity and tradition. Uh, I think in, in, in the, the research that I have done, I have found a lot of mod modern uh, form, modern things in, in our tradition, for example. 
this is a this is a bow uh, which is done by Chinese lacquer, but it's it's from thousand five hundred years ago. But the moment that I saw this image the first time, I thought this was plastic. You know, it's just completely modern. It, it, it seems that, that I can make it in, in plastic and put it in the night market. Like all the forms of the, the, the famous ceramics, it, it doesn't give you a lot of you know, ancient feeling. It's just timeless. Also, the uh, the furniture, the, the details of the, the main style furniture, it's completely modern for me. And up to the architecture, but when you see this, of course, it's it's very traditional. But when you see the structure, this is not traditional at all. I think it's very modern. So started from here, and I have tried and to to look for some evidence, you know, something that I can I can catch and then design something. And I find um, this structure between the the pillar and the beam, and actually the it's a, it's a character. It's called gong, which means labor, means working. And it, it's just the, the structure, uh, part of the structure of the beam and the column together. So I have just, you take advantage of that and make a, make a very simple gong element and then started to play with it. And I find, oh, it, it, it could be something you, you to uh, for you to to construct this at first it, it was it was really um, you know I, I I've done this research you know, without any purpose or function or anything but later it does come I think when when you put the weight it, on top of the pair of, of gums and then it can become a table small table and I did something more and you know, use uh, aluminum and, and steel together to construct something like this and then you put a little bit of um, we call this a small small platform in, inside so it becomes a, a kind of shelf system and it comes with a color which is quite special because actually uh, it's it's like a construction um, without an end but i kind of, kind of like this feeling it gives me a, a very traditional feeling uh, when i when i'm in the chinese architecture then later i find if i change the scale of, of this small character and it becomes something more interesting like a like a button but this button doesn't is not fixed on the on the on the cloth it's just very loose you know it can connect two pieces of, of cloth mm. y bench is another adventure that i something that i really like to do and uh, to challenge the the old piece of um, like the core piece of chinese furniture because the, the bench in China, it's um, very special. It's, it's different than, um, than the bench in, in the Western society because Chinese bench are usually quite light and small. And we do quite a lot of stuff on top of it. And already from the 3,000 years ago, we already have this, but the first one might be for the for the governors, but this one that's completely folk. Then I think uh, six years ago, I, I found Muji has done this. This is designed by uh, <coughs> Naoto Fukasawa. And for me, it's I kind of disagree with this. You know what they have done is just uh, renewed it. It's just simply uh, you polish an old bench and then you use the same way to construct a new one and it really costs a lot and I, I really disagree with this way and I started to to dig into it you know how the bench is constructed and then 
can I can I come up with something some innovation that uh, instead of using the traditional wooden joiner, can we come up with something easier? So this is what I, what I have done in a system. Uh, it's a module system. Uh, you can use bamboo or wood to construct the, the bench part and the connection is always a little bit uh, small metal. And later I change it to uh, plastic. So it comes with a flat package like in all the IKEA products, very easy. And it's quite, uh, you only use, uh, need a, a small rubber hammer to install it, no glue needed. It's a bench system. First, they come with two sizes. And I find it's, it's possible to play with the, the construction. And also, you can form a, a bed out of it. And then later, this is the, the bamboo version that we, we use um, painting on the side. And this is also kind of inspiration from the calligraphy. And this is what I have done for the uh, Italian company, Veneta Cucina, when they asked me to do a, a China kitchen. So it fits in quite well, you know, it, it gives you a general atmosphere of quite Chinese, but actually you don't find any Chinese evidence inside. This is what I, I would like to, to do. Embodiment is another try of, you know, um, I, I got the idea on the, on the way to Fujian province on, on the research. And I find uh, this piece of uh, wooden window and by the, the restaurant, it's like really, really dirty. But I, I really like the, the pattern of it because it's um, actually, it's very traditional Chinese pattern, but I can say this is also, uh, you know, you guys won't have any problem communicating or understanding this pattern because it's completely just geometrical. And I find the details very interesting. I am, Unlike the other uh, interior designers who always put uh, the, the old window just on the wall, I want to do something new. I, I, want, I want to do something different. So I have done a, a silicone mold of, out of it and to just to record all the details down and then put a ransom on top of it. So uh, two times I, I can have like a like a negative mode of, of the window. But of course, it's, it's a bit bigger than I thought. So uh, we really had some difficulty in, in achieving this huge pieces of uh, resin and inside a lot of bubble. <laughs> so it, it makes the whole thing is like something that I, that I pulled it out from the sea, from the oceans, like something from Titanic. And then, then, then I put um, a, a metal frame out of it. But in the metal frame, I have placed uh, an LED. So it becomes an atmosphere lighting. So in this way, I think the, the spirit of the window is carried on, but I, without destroying the, the window itself. So here's a comparison. Uh, steamer is is a as a project that I um, during my during the time that my studio is be, beside um, you know the, the uh, is a Chinese dumpling company <laughs> that they make pop out so they use a lot of steamer then I was watching how they they have you know used the, the traditional steamer and how the the crafts how many parts of it and all the details how how the craft has constructed that. And I suddenly the you know, idea has hit me that maybe a student doesn't necessarily to, to continue the job of steaming, but maybe it can come out to, uh, from the kitchen to the, to the living room to do something. So I have combined the leather with bamboo together, but with under the form of, 
a steamer, give it a reasonable size to construct maybe a small side table. You know, um, just experiment and the element, small stool, a coat hanger, a mirror. And down there is some some loose space for, for you to, to keep some scarf or those stuff. So it's a series of, uh, of furniture out of steamer. And the Hanzhou stool is uh, a lot of people have uh, known me through this work. But actually Hanzhou stool is, is not a not a furniture that I wanted to make. It says it's a statement uh, of, of the how to use the material of bamboo. I think bamboo is a strong culture in, in China. Then in nearly every city, you can find objects and products that, that is made of bamboo. Um, and even for the same category of, of products, um, depends on the, the, the area and the form, it would change itself. And there are a lot of crafts about bamboo, which is fascinating. But it's all about understanding of, of bamboo. I think um, most Chinese um, don't really understand this plant. Bamboo is very special. The cell is the fiber. And the fiber comes all in the same direction right from the bottom to the top. That is why, you know, it's, it's like um, you are combining fiber, but in the same direction and in the, under a, a form of cylinder. So this makes bamboo really strong and flexible. This is how, you know, bamboo in the culture can do a lot of amazing stuff. <clears throat> then, Back to the studio, I have, this is my first tryouts because I, I think this is something quite suitable for, to express the, the concept of flexibility. And I, when I finish this, and I use my finger to, to, to press down from the top, and I have the feeling that um, um, the lower you go, the more res resistance you're receiving. And that hit me, and I think it, it can become a pretty piece of uh, functional furniture. And of course, started from paper, and I, I did really a lot of research of paper, and I made model from paper, but I didn't succeed until the day that I have seen the, the bamboo fiber. And that, that moment, I know that I found the material. And this is quite interesting way to, to make it, you know, in industrially. And you, you put raw bamboo into the water for two weeks, relatively, and then it will resolve into the fiber. And then you, you press the fiber and then let it get loose and put a lot of resin into it. And then you construct a, like a new kind of block. Uh, that is the, the like um, like a module material, and then you use a huge machine, um, so like a huge cutter, and cut a layer which is only zero point three millimeters, but in that layer all the fibers will, will be arranged in the same direction, <clears throat> and then it comes with different kind of finish. And what I have done is to renew this material that I have placed three layers together, but all vertical to each other. And in between, I have placed a, a non-woven fabrics into it and then press it into a, each layer. Then, then I got a one millimeter material, bamboo material. This is, this is kind of um, innovation of the, the bamboo material. Then inspired by this piece by the Japanese designer, uh, what's his name? I am. Anyway, I'm getting older. I forget names. Then I think you know 
the construction inside, I, I need a very solid construction to stop the weight because it, it cannot come all the way down. So I need something uh, strong. And I have uh, only five layers down there. So it's, it's only five millimeter. I got this. And although it looks very, very thin, but it's very strong. So on top of this, I have glued uh, bamboo veneer, uh, but only on, on the down part of the 20, 25 centimeters. So I have pressed it. Then I got something like this. Then I think how to connect this. I use a, a piece of raw bamboo, which is, this piece is already 20 years. So it gives me a very nice finish. But inside I have placed um, uh, two pieces of wood, very, very thin wood. And this is for later on, which you can see here. And I will place inside a small wooden joinery to prevent the piece from rotating. And a little bit of uh, polish. And I have this. And it, it's a piece of furniture that it, it, it moves, you know. And uh, we had a bit headache of you know, how to, to do the finish because I cannot use uh, the, the normal uh, paint or lacquer. Uh, because it, it constantly moves. And I still use wax on the top. And it's a furniture that tells you about your weight. So how deep you, you, you sit. And then I relatively know the, the, the weight range. So all the way down, it, it, it could be 90 kilos. But we are still... Um, in improving this, and I, I'm, I'm talking to a, a, a very nice um, wood veneer factory, and then they would like to, to do this and you know, have a try to, to get it made industrially. So hopefully next year we can, we can have some more pieces. So from here that I, because of the, the school that I got recognized, I, I have shortlisted by the Loewe Foundation Craft Prize. And after that, I, I, a lot of uh, crafts people or people in the crafts field in China has contact with me. And from that, I have, I have uh, a journey of, you know, doing a lot of investigation and research about um, the crafts in, in China. We have so many crafts. And I mainly have um, researched about the Chang in Bodley and the Vinting Brocade, Gold Leaf, Wooden Joinery, Filigree, and Chinese Lacquer. So I have, um, I'm, I'm, for there, I'm not only the designer, but I'm, I'm, I'm more like the, the curator of the project that I have invited a lot of um, European designers to, to join us. Uh, it's the High Sparker, you know, the, the famous um, Dutch designer who has co-founded uh, the Dutch organization Dorp Design. And Thomas Wiedersporten, uh, he was our, our headmaster two years ago, but he, he has resigned. He's also a very famous um, Graphic designer runs the company of Tonic. Aldo Bucker, which is the son of Heist Bucker, but he's also a very, very nice and very good designer. Uh, Lisa Smith, the Belgian designer. Satyanda Pakali, Indian designer based in Amsterdam. Otto Fioravanti is a, a young Italian designer. By saying young, you know, it, it, in the Italian culture, if, if you can become some <laughs> name in, in your 50s, so you're already a, a young designer. And Christoph Brach, which is uh, Thomas and, and my uh, classmate in, in the, the Eindhoven. But his company, Raw Color, is a very avant garde and design company from the Netherlands. 
so we have done. I, I will give you some examples that we have done for the the, the crafts and the, the tradition. For the Chang embroidery, we have found um, it's amazing color, amazing pattern from Sichuan province, but it's really, really inside China. It's a village, it's in the middle of nowhere. And we have found, um, you know, their products, the, what all the, the women are making are, are still the traditional pattern and the traditional thing. Then if we don't help them to to renew it to to bring it to the to the outside society you know outside world i'm afraid it's going to be you know it's going to be disappear in some years so we have come up with a, a very simple idea to um i don't want them to make big pieces but small ones like a, like a pocket so in the pocket, then we can combine the pocket with with um, bags, with t-shirts, with trousers, you know, pants. So in this way, um, the both the the the, the charm embroidery makers, um, they are. It's quite easy for them to to make these um, pockets, but from from the commercial side i think it's also quite not difficult to to broadcast it you know to advertise it and then we have small collaboration with levi's they they like it a lot so in this way i i'm, I'm not clear how and where exactly are, are, are these Chan women but i hope i hope this project has has bring, has brought them some fresh air and then hopefully a lot of new business and for for the ranging brocades we uh, we have invited um, thomas to to do an innovation of it and from a european perspective and thomas has stayed there for a week and then really watch uh, how they have have made it. The ranging brocade is uh, used to be um, the the cloth supplier of of the, the emperor in China, and then the speciality of, of this material is uh, of this crafts. It's it has organization of uh, color in the horizontal uh, direction, and then that has made the the piece really colorful on on the the front side but the back side is very chaotic and usually it would take a long time to to make it so the craftsmen are usually not the part of the the user they they never ever got the chance to use it and then for a european uh, this is kind of you know non-human you know say then Thomas has come up with um, um, with an idea that he has reorganized uh, the, the pattern. The pattern is quite simple. He cut um, the, the circle into two parts and then put in a hourglass kind of shape. So one hour you can make one centimeter of engine brocade. One day if you work to eight hours, you got eight centimeters. You work six days a week, then you got 48 centimeters a week. And then he uses the, the pattern from the, the emperor in Ming Dynasty. He has organized a pattern like this. Then put it into color, which looks very modern. But then we have suggested him to take advantage of some traditional pattern in the ranging brocade. For example, this is the pattern from for, for cloud. And he has taken it and to form such a, a pattern for the ranging cloth. And then we have waved it. And this is relatively um, easier than the, 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 the traditional pattern because usually the traditional pattern will, will be more complicated and then 
this is modern. This is quite um, in an industrially uh, made way to to do it. And then later, Thomas has asked uh, a fashion designer to design like a wedding dress for the daughter of the the, the, the craftsman, which has made the, the craftsman very very moving. I think it's also a very nice project to use the, the European perspective onto the Chinese craft space, and it comes to something very, very fresh. And for Filigree, we have invited uh, Aldo Bakke to do it. And Filigree is, is uh, I think, people who has known it because Filigree also exists in Europe in, or in, in I, I believe, Mexico also have it. And, it's a it's a, a very delicate way to to do with um, um, precious metal strings. So Aldo has tried by himself with the you know, silver strings, and Aldo has has the cap capability of of doing um, jewelry. So it, it was no problem for him to construct something like this. But a lot of patience do need. And then his proposal is very very. Um, Surprising, I would say. He has constructed some new patterns for the filigree, but in the end, he has chosen um, the pattern which you can see on the on the right side. It's just a change of the, the degrees from zero to sixty. Then you think uh, deeper. It looks quite industrial, but it's not possible in any. Uh, industrial way, you can only construct it with by hand, one millimeter, and then you change a little bit until you you get sixty degrees. And what is it? Uh, this one, <laughs> it looks very nice, but the, um, in the end, it's it's a it's a teaspoon. So actually, the open is here. So you you put it upside down. You put the tea inside here. Then you can dip it into the, the the cup and then you get your tea. And in the same way, he has constructed this. This is relatively bigger, and it's for to to cover uh, cheese that you have haven't finished. Very luxury thing. But the most interesting one is this piece. Uh, I will leave you like ten seconds to guess what it is. You know, it's construct of. Uh, filigree of course you know it's there it's not there because it's all penetrating you know it's a it's almost like a, like a nothing and when i know the function of it it was really breathtaking uh, it's a honey deeper you know you can you can put it in the honey and the honey will, will all you know get involved in, in between the spaces in the in the filigree and then you can put it back to the to your cup and you get a very nice um, honey soup. So this is, this kind of thing is what I think very right to do, to, to update the, or to, to innovate our tradition. So we have all done it. Very impressive. And then for, for the, the craft prize, I become, um, Later, the, the the jewelry member, and because of this, and Design Shanghai has invited me to to come up with with a new part that they want to invite more handmade or um, you know craftsmen to to join Design Shanghai. Then I think it it's in the era that you know we we need to um, kind of redefine and then get away with the, the old definition, cross the boundary. So this is what I have thought. I think now objects or, or design already come into somewhere. It's, it's always a combination. It's always um, something in between design crafts and art. It's really hard to tell. Uh, this is clearly uh, this or that, but I think, um, Good things, you know. I, I really like the the words of object because it it doesn't give me any definition of how it comes. You know, this is more it's it's freer for 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 the mind to follow. 
So from here, come up with the, the logo. This is what I call new object. And it's a new part in Design Shanghai, which is going to be uh, held in, uh, we only have like three weeks, wow. And here's the all invited designers and design groups and craftsmen. I think it's, it's the first part in, in Design Shanghai that involves craftsmen into the exhibition. Is we, we have designed uh, the, the arrangement, it's about 525 uh, square meters. So last but not least, I think this is for this year very special that I also invited my friend Thomas to, to join um, Create Cures. It's, um, it's an activity that I have um, uh, co-founded with my friend Frank Zhou. It's also a, a good designer from Beijing. Um, that started from the outbreak of COVID-19 in Wuhan uh, beginning of the year. Um, during the first, I think the second day of our lockdown, then we, we're kind of lost. You know, you, you really get, uh, you really don't know what to do, uh, you know, what will come. And then Frank called me and said, you know, uh, we are designers. Um, we are not those rich people and we can donate a lot of money, a lot of material to the society. Then, but, but we have the responsibility Then we have the feeling that we, we need to do something. And I, I suggest, you know, for designers, I think the copyright, you know, your intellectual property is the most valuable thing of, of, of you. And then why don't we just donate this to the society? Then, we have come in immediately called a bunch of friends to to join us and the first edition was focused in, in with chinese designers but then we have spread it in, into the the world as also like the COVID also spread it in, into the world uh, i will give you some examples like this is by raw color and uh, I think this is probably one of my favorite uh, projects in the Create Cures. It looks like they haven't done anything. They just give the concept and then and take the advantage of something that you already have and then do a little bit of change and for you to, to, to prevent yourself in the COVID. And this is by Frank Joe. It's a, it's a small ultraviolet light that you can have in, in your, your entrance in, in, at your home. So you put the, the keys and, and, and mobile phone into that and, uh, for, for some <coughs> just one minute and, and get it cleaned. It's what I, what I have done. And I think um, more importantly than what you have something special to you know, against the, the COVID. I think it's rather to, to call back to the good habit, the good convention of hygiene of people. And in the Chinese society, we used to have a uh, handkerchief. Everybody had handkerchief 30 years ago or maybe 40 years ago. And now it's all replaced by the tissues. And I think in environmentally speaking, it's also better that everybody keeps a, a handkerchief. Then I have done a little bit change in the handkerchief to, to change it to, to a maskerchief that I caught. That's something that you can uh, you know, change it to a mask temporarily when you need it. I think this is something quite um, important. And this is from Form Future from, from Thomas and Hermann. Uh, it's very surprising when they demonstrate the, the, the scene. Uh, I always thought it's maybe a, a chair that you can speak to each other um, in just like maybe four or five meters. But actually they have demonstrated in, in the distance of like 25 to, to 30 meters, a very considerably long distance. Quite surprising, I'm looking forward to, to for them to you know really make it uh, real, I think it's really really nice one. <coughs> I, I almost laugh out when when I first saw this concept. It's it's very you know uh, it brings up a very good 
discussion of what's new and what's old. It's very nice comparison. And from my friend Chen Furong, he has done some you know, a little bit change in the, in the wet tissues. So when you receive the pack, you can use the tissue and then it becomes a glove and you clean it up and then have your thing. Uh, my friend Kiran, he, he has done a new package. You know, this, it seems like from now on that everybody will have different um, companies in the, you know, you, things in your in your bag in your purse to carry so this is a set of small and hygiene hygienic products that you need to carry italian friend and julio yagetti he has done you know from this pattern you can just bring anything that you you have in hand according to the the technical drawings you can make a, a fake mask uh, yourself uh, this is the, the only participants, which is a big design company. Milani is from Zurich. It's the probably the biggest design company in Zurich. Um, in in the picture, it's, it's not very well demonstrated, but in in the in the video, it's I think it's it's quite good. You know, the, the pen that you can rotate open and then put in the uh, alcohol. You know alcoholic um, cleaners and then to to close up and then to spray and then clean your hands when you need it and on the other hand is, is the, the stylus it's from my japanese friend Liu he, he has done this for him for his daughter actually you know, just to to help her to wash hands uh, my swiss friend um, Simon Kampfer, he has done this, uh, it's called two meter uh, walking stick. And then we have done uh, last month in, in Design Beijing, a, a version of one meter stick, you know, to, to keep social distance. It's quite interesting. And my friend from Shanghai, Wu Jiaying, she has done actually not really about um, you know how to clean up or how to, to keep distance, but he has. She has done another way. She she has made this um, this small cartridge then to deliver free flowers for people. Because in the sec, I, I remember in the second month she has started to do this because people are depressed and then want to get some encouraged, and then she was still deliver flowers, free flowers for for people to cheer up and then we really have a lot of exposures and then the media are paying a lot of attention to us we have yeah, this is quite out of my imaginations and then even uh, our architect uh, friend and Sun uh, <laughs> he his thing was on a, a, a Japanese I think Japanese drama or something like that. It's very, very funny in a way. Yeah, it's, it's a new entertainment. And then we hopefully will still continue this project in the future. Because COVID is still with us. Okay, so I think it's, it's already pretty long, longer than I thought. <laughs> You just didn't want to answer any questions. <laughs> so, <Sorry. laughs> no, I think, hey, thank you. I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, for me, this was a breath of fresh air to like um, see all these things that like and see how active you are with everything. I really, I really admire your work. And I have to say, the biggest part I'm very, very jealous is about is your journey through the country discovering like lost craftsmanship. Yeah. Um, I think this is like, this is something that just blows my mind uh, where I traveled China just a little bit, but it was all like from city to city. And I would love to see the more rural parts. I would love to meet those craftsmen that do stuff that is just, they don't care how long it takes. <laughs> it's, and uh, I think, uh, yeah. So I think, uh, thank you so much, Min, for, for like giving you this, giving us this insight. Um, we skip the questions. Uh, <laughs> I, refer them, I refer them all to you to like bug you, write your emails. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, 
um, yeah, so thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. It was delightful.